I just wanted to show you how dirty this is. And take run around and fold the controller for it. And look at all the plates. They're all cruddy, full carbon. I'm gonna clean them before we put them back in too. We're in here, we might as well clean them, get them cleaned up and make them work better. Well, there you go. That's what it looks like. Two new helicoils in there. I had to drill them out. Put some uh, M8 by 1.25s in there, but it's ready to go. Flatten it back out, make sure the surface is nice flat. I'll clean this all and this, the rest of this intake up. Get it ready to put back in. So the bracket that the intake sits on that I had to unbolt, two bolts that come up to the bottom intake, I loosened the two bolts, the nuts, that go into the engine block so that plate that it sits on has some play in it. I don't want it binding up and pushing up against the intake and making it hard to get in. I'm just going to set the, the outer, I saw the outer intake, the one that's closest to the firewall, back in and get it in, in setting down in there out of the way, just like that. It's been cleaned. Um, I use brake clean, I use carb cleaner, clean it all up, and then brake clean just to make sure it's clean. I need to take my tape off of my engine block here where I had it um, taped up. I'll clean that with some brake clean, make sure that's clean. I've already cleaned it once. Put my two uh, outer studs back in on either end. Go on either end here. You don't have, you don't have to tighten them, you just, you just got to run them down by hand. You don't have to. You don't want to actually tighten them in. They'll stop. That stops. Just that's all you need to do. I'm not going to go anywhere. Run both of them back in. Either end of the upper intake here, upper bolt side of the intake. Lean way over to do this. My legs are not going to like that. At the end of the day. Okay, get my gasket. Really can only go one way. Let's slide that over the studs here. Hold it in place for us. Come on. Get up against the head. Okay. I'll get my harness a little there. We go. It's a little better. I'm out of my way. So here, this has been cleaned. Hopefully you can see that, how clean that is compared to what it was. It was filthy. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to slide that back on the studs here. My line, pin my line the right way. Watch your lines down here, the EGR line and stuff. I gotta get that out of my way here. I wonder if it might be easier to do this in one shot. I say that, but it might be. Let's see. Let me pull this stud out. I need to line my gasket up at the same time, but I mean, yeah, it's easier to do that. I'll get this close. Start the stud, get my gasket lined up with it, get it, get it uh, started through, and then, then do it a little easier. Get around everything that's in the way. Just remember, don't bury anything that needs to come up. I moved this, has to come back up to this firewall here. Uh, pulled them up so they're not buried. I don't want them buried and trapped. Down in there. Finish putting the stud in here. Just gonna snug that up. There's a hex on the end of this. These studs. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna snug it up. Just to make sure it's tight. Not. Just make sure it's in the whole way. You don't. You don't want to crush it. That's it. They're not gonna move. That's it. Okay. Um. I've got some electrical connectors 
down here that I undid. Uh, you can't see. There's three or four of them, but I'm going to redo them right now. Put them back in uh, because I just think it's a whole lot easier with that intake off of there to do it than it is after it's on there. So let's do that. There's one. That's going to be my little sender. There's two. I got another one here somewhere. I know. Got my crank sensor. That goes right above, sneaks in above the oil filter and to the front, to the crank sensor. Remember that, kicking it out. I know you can't see this, but no, honestly, I can't see it either. Well, it's just happening by feel. There's three. Much easier to do that before you put the intake back in place. Get this out of the way now. Let's, let's uh. Let's get this intake up and start it in the right spot. Should be able to move it right onto the stud here with the gasket and hold it in place for me. Now let's see. It has to go this way. Just like this. Those little studs on the end are nice because they hold the gasket for you. Okay. Make sure it's clean. Make sure the gasket surface is clean before you go putting it back together. Alright, the DVR has to come up. Good. Let me get a couple of nuts on that. Just to hold it in place. So let me see if I have one. Found one. Need a washer for it, but we'll put a washer on there. Uh, nut. Alright, let me get my studs started now. Start putting them back in. I know you can't see any of it, but it's nothing exciting. Just putting bolts in. How thrilling as that is. Now let me get my extension in. Now right, we're just going to start snugging them down. I'm not going to torque them up yet. I'm going to torque these to spec. Not a big torque Nazi, but gaskets and stuff like this, you have to torque them to spec or you're going to have a problem. Uh, I'm going to tape this actually. And I'm thinking I'm going to tape the throttle body so I don't drop anything into it. Not that I've ever done that, but, uh, yeah, of course I have. I did, so let me get my torque wrench, 156 inch-pounds, not foot-pounds, inch-pounds for this. Um, start from the center, work your way out. I'm going to do it in like three stages. I'll do 50, and then 100, and then I'll do 156. All right, so that's just one round, fighting it. Um, just different lengths for the different bolts. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go around again, starting from the inside, working my way out at 100 and then 156 inch pounds. I torqued that down to 156 inch pounds. A little bit of a pain because the bottom ones are a little harder to get to, but not a big deal. So I'm just going to start plugging stuff back in now. So I've got my uh, injector. My, uh, there should be a slot for these. Yeah, it's right here. Push that on there. Push that one on there. Hook my injectors. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to cable tie them. Every single one of them, the, the lock on them is broken because they're just old and brittle. So we'll cable tie them. They'll work fine. Start plugging my connectors back in uh, wherever I see them. Hopefully I don't miss any. Well, I don't know if I miss any, I guess. Um, Alright, so I'm going to hook my lines up back to my throttle body 
gonna push my brake booster line back in. Should be able to just push that in. Yep, the locks. Um, got my coolant hoses here. Get my clamp off of that. Uh, I don't think it's gonna leak. It's facing up. Get that one hooked back up. Okay, get that one. It's fun. Let me get my uh, evap hose. So I'm sticking directly up here. Now, um, this has a little fitting on it. You just have to kind of push this onto the fitting and squeeze these two tabs, hold them in, and pull it up, and it pops off. Uh, my fuel line here. Get that rerouted here. Hook that up. Get my evap on. Push back onto my purge valve. Locked in. Get that. Uh, supposed to be here. Make sure it's on there, right? Come on. Yeah, it's locked in. And I've got my other coolant line that goes to the to uh, diagonally down the bottom of the to the left of the uh, throttle body. I'm gonna plug it in quick because it's gonna leak. Push that on. I'm gonna get the clamp. You can't be able to see it, but there's clamp on it. Let me get that on there. And then I've got to run uh, one more line which is uh, PVC. Uh, line which I when I run it back up here, I'll put it on. Clamp on. Let me see if I want to put that other line back on for later. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe now. I don't think it's going to be in my way. It might be easier to put that on right now. It goes here. It goes to the back. The 90 degree boot. Put that on there. No clamps on this one, just uh, just push on, push it on all the way. Good. Okay, uh, I've got another hard line that I have to run back in here. Let me get that. It runs back through here, buried. I'm trying to remember where it all runs. Okay, this end goes here. This end. here too. And then this goes down here. Let's put this back on the firewall here. A couple of screws. Nothing exciting. Hopefully you can see this. I don't know. Can you see it? I don't know what you're saying. Uh, what the heck's going on over here? I can't tell. The camera's freaking out. Maybe you can't see that. Can you see it? Yeah, I think you can see it. See what I'm looking? Yeah, you can. So I'm just attaching this again. Get one started on that side. Get one started on this side. Okay. Pop one up here. Screws into that right there. Okay, Let's start feeding this back through. Forget where this one goes. I'm gonna have to look that up. Back in here somewhere. I don't know where. I know it's in the back behind somewhere. <sighs> Got to figure it out. I took it out of there. Let's figure out where it goes. I know it goes back in here. Up across the top. Goes like that. It goes down here like this. These go up here, like so. One right here. But then one that goes onto the top of the EGR. Okay, this connector here goes on the right here on the throttle body. Yep. Yay. Alright, these guys. These these guys. I'll fill you out for you. I got one more connector back here. <sighs> Gotta figure out where that one goes. 
Where does that go? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Missed one somewhere. Let's find it. This. This goes up here. Good. We've got one more. One more vacuum line fitting here. All I gotta do is figure out. Oh, you know where it goes? I know where it goes. It's right here. Get to the um, fuel rail. I think it has to go on this side. It might work better. Yeah. It goes right on the fuel rail here. These hard lines that I ran that connect to the EVAP and the fuel rail. Uh, there's a connector, a 90 degree connector in the middle, which hooks down to the left side, well, passenger side of the throttle body. When you route them, the hose that runs into the throttle body for the coolant from the passenger side, you want to come up underneath that, inside that, and then run these lines. So that's where everything is. Uh, it's time to put this throttle body back on here. So let's do that. Now i got to figure this bracket out because I forget how it goes. Now it's a throttle body gasket. Throttle body. Throttle, throttle body gasket. Really, it goes one way. It'll match up to the outline, pretty much, of the uh, uh, the mounting plate. Um, electrical connectors to the passenger side. I'm just going to set that down on there. And I'm going to start these bolts. I'm not going to torque them down yet because uh, I have to figure this bracket out and how this bracket mounts and get these started. I think it sits on the corner, that corner of the throttle body. Pretty sure. Pretty sure, which means I don't know. All right, this bracket goes like this. I have a 13 millimeter bolt on the side of the head. I could not remember how it went. Of course, I had the bolt right in there, but I put the bolt all the way back in so I couldn't see that it was loose, actually. I had to go look it up, but looked it up. I'll just put it back together now. And on top of that stud, it goes on the, this, this end goes on top of the stud at the end of the intake. And then that just gets turned down onto that. Uh, does it have a washer? Uh, no, it does not. Is that? Tighten that up. Let's see if I can get this with this. I don't know if I can. Yeah, maybe a little at a time I can. Yeah, enough. Actually, once it broke loose, it's, it's real easy, but one click at a time. Okay. Yeah, that was fun for that bracket. Huh, my electrical connector. Back here, let's click that guy back on. Yeah, I'm gonna go right behind him. Nah, nah, I'm going front. I don't know, who knows? Yeah, I'm going front. I think front would be better. Right, I've got to do my throttle cable as well. All right, let me get a uh, extension socket, tighten that up. You'll not be happy if you forget to put the oil uh, dipstick tube back in. I have it plugged up now. I've got a, that's, that's what goes on there. I knew there was something that went on that one bolt. I knew it. I can tell by looking at it. Now, I've got to take this off. I forgot. So I went over into my pile of parts and went, uh, dipstick tube. Don't forget to put that back in. I'll bet you. I'm betting you. That actually broke. So a piece of it sticking into the block. Man. So that's an absolute nightmare. Great. So now, yeah, it is. I have no way to really get at that. Sometimes I amaze myself at the stuff that I just don't see. I, I know better. I pulled this when I was doing the intake to do the intake gasket and it broke. And I wasn't paying attention. Didn't realize it. There's the other half to it that I got out. This is down in the block. I had to pull the pan and use a brass punch. I was like, what I don't want to do is beat this end up so it mushrooms out and then you got to get it through the block and it's hard. So I used the brass punch. It came right out, hit it maybe four or five times, popped up out of the block. So I've got to order a new dipstick tube. Um, and a new gasket, and I'll do another short video on how to put this thing back together. The new dipstick tube came in. It's curious that it is the Ford OEM dipstick tube. Um, doesn't have this bracket on it anymore. It's hold down for the bolt. But, um, <clears throat> so that little ridge there, which is where it broke, that's right up against the block, and when you push the new one in, um, 
it's not going to go all in there. You're going to have a quarter or half an inch. So you have to push that in. So what I had to do is, because the intake's already on, and I don't want to take it off again, is reach down in there, slide this long <clears throat> pry bar right up against that, and then I can just tap it and tap right in there and tap it into the block. It's not going to come out. So now that's done. I can just finish up what I have left. I'm going to attempt to show you hooking up the EVR route. I don't know how much of this uh, actually going to be able to see. I think it's going to be a pretty difficult for you to see much of it. Uh, it's the one I had to put the heel of coils in. I've got it started on that side. Let's see if I can get the other one lined up here and get that started. I've got them both started. Get my socket now. Yeah, it's tight. Alright, that's it. Worked well with the heel coils. I have a couple bolts to the front of this uh, EGR uh, tube. Uh, I've got some vacuum stuff up top, throttle cable. Um, I think I'm pretty much. That's pretty much it. I'm almost done. I have to put the intake back on. I'm waiting uh, because I had to drop the pan to get the uh, dipstick tube. I'm waiting on the or the gasket to get here. But um, I'll show that in another video. That's separate. You know, dropping the pan off and, and redoing that. But. Um, we're almost there. A couple things to put back together and then we should be good to go. So let me do the EGR, this front of this EGR uh, tube first. We'll get that started. There's two bolts. Or two nuts, I should say. Alright, just tighten them back up. I gotta put this one remaining bolt that used that was holding the old dipstick down in the top of the uh, throttle body. Tighten that one up. Put that in. Make sure it's synced up here. Synced up, whatever I'll say. Synced up doesn't make any sense. Tightened up, basically. Here's my old and my new, I think. So this is the old one. You can see it's busted. Two of the things are missing. Junkyard. Was able to get a new one, new a new used, a new old one. All four of the uh, connectors are on it, which is good. Means it'll work a whole lot better. Uh, I need this piece off of it, off the end here, and I need this here, need that as well. Like that. And this is junk, trash. Plug that into the side of the air box here. Ah, oh, that sounds so much better than it did before. Uh, that one. Get this is where it's supposed to go. This is not in the right place right now. Got it stuck. Got a bad spot there. All right. Good. Throttle cable. That back up here. Just a barrel connector. Line that up. Lay it down in there. This. All right, that's giving me a little grief. A little bit of silicone, silicone spray. Make it move a little easier. There it goes. The last piece.
And that is it. That's all she wrote. Well done. But ah, actually, I wrote this. I need to put that back. So I've been driving this for a couple weeks now. Code's cleared, hasn't come back. Uh, car's cold right now and the temperature just started up. Uh, you can see the difference long term fuel trim now 11, 11.7, uh, 11 and the short term uh, 8, 8 to 10. Uh, once this warms up, uh, long term, if you're driving down the road, is about 5. And the short term will be uh, 0, negative 1. Uh, much, much better than it was before. If you remember, it was pegged out a long term at 29, and short term was probably close to 20. Uh, so it's well within uh, range now and not uh, causing any problems. So the intake replacing that intake gas could definitely fix the issue. That's it for this 2000 Ford Focus uh, 2.0 liter single overhead cam, not dual overhead cam. Uh, replacing the intake manifold gaskets on this. Didn't really want to do that, but had to do it. It was uh, throwing a code and uh, causing problems. It's definitely running better when it's cold. Uh, and at idle and uh, it's not exactly where I'd like it to be we really want it to be around zero but it's much much lower than it was and it doesn't seem to be causing any issue and not throwing a code anymore so if you have this problem with your car I hope this helps you out if you like the video subscribe below thanks for watching I gotta put this one remaining bolt that used that was holding the old dipstick down in the top of the uh, throttle body. Tighten that one up. Put that in. Make sure it's synced up here. Synced up, whatever you want to say. Synced up doesn't make any sense. Tightened up basically.